Okay. Quirk number two, or curveball number two, variation number two here, would be a problem that looks like this. What makes this problem different from all the other problems that we've done so far? We have the double angle on the inside, right? Okay. So, how do we address this? I'll tell you how we definitely don't address this. We don't divide by two right away, right? We've talked about that. We've talked about how we can't operate on what's inside a trigonometric function. We can get rid of this, then we can address that, okay? But we can't divide by two right off the bat. So, when we start this problem, again, this problem, even though there is a double angle, and you're like, you told us when we were talking about double angles the first time to just get them out of the way. That was when we were verifying and simplifying, because I said double angles and single angles don't play well together in those simplification verification problems, okay? We're not doing any simplifying or verifying, we're solving. So double angles are fine, okay? Because what are we going to do? We're going to get rid of that, and we're going to have a statement that says 2x equals something, and then we, don't, then, we, then we can divide by 2, right? Think about that. We can get at this as soon as we get rid of that. And we can get, get rid of that as soon as it's the only trig term in the problem, like so. Now, if I was solving an equation that had a double angle and a single angle, if there was something here, right, some heinous, ungodly creation like this, I don't even want to go there, right? This would be a scenario where it's like single angle and double angle, bad news. Then you would have to swap this out for that that big fraction that involves tangent. And then we're talking serious business. Okay? I don't want to do that. Do you want to do that? No. Okay, good. If you had said yes, we would have done it for everybody's sake. Okay, good. Thank you. Matthew just saved you guys. Alright, so, bottom line. We still want to write everything in terms of sine, cosine, or tangent, if possible. Right? We still want to isolate the trigonometric term. Done. Then we want to take the arc function of both sides. So we're taking the arc tan of both sides. The tangent that was over here is gone, and now I have an arc tangent with that side. Okay, and I hope I'm not, maybe I am. We're taking the arc tangent here, and we're taking the arc tangent here. That's what we're doing. And that is the inverse operation of that, so they cancel, and I'm left with 2x. I'm taking the arc tangent of this and writing it like so. And then I'm evaluating this. What pi value has a tangent value of radical 3 over 3? We've talked about that. Right? It has to be the pi over 6 angles because there's two 3's. Okay, so 2x is equal to pi over 6 where tangent is positive in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 3 it would be 7 pi over 6. Okay, now, there's a couple of different ways to address this issue. So what are we going to do? Now we got to, we're getting two solutions, that's why the comma is there. I'm not creating two equations, but we're getting two solutions, okay? So I'm going to divide this by 2, and quite honestly, I don't know if this is mathematically acceptable, but I'm going to divide both of them by 2 as well, so I just put them both with a 2 underneath and I create these fraction sandwiches. And one half, or one sixth, divided by two in a fraction sandwich like this, the two gets multiplied by the six. We get pi over 12, and here we get seven pi over 12, okay? I'm gonna stop now and then restart this problem uh, to talk about something else. It's gonna take me a little bit of time. So I wanted to shorten this one up and then we'll come back to it.